Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Today I'm going to explain a little bit more about these different uh, lumber product sizes, categories, grades, uh, and what happens with the prices, what the customers do when they're hunting around to find the wood they need, uh, the applications for the end user, which products can do what, and at the sawmill, when the producers decide which uh, material um, they're going to put uh, into manufacturing to be able to sell at the best price they can find over the coming weeks. And let's just start with the standard, which is your number two and better standard grade used in construction across Canada, US, you know, Japan, Europe, etc. And these are, you know, your two by four to two by 12 sizes in what's known as a random load or mixed load, meaning the dimension is two by four, but the length could be anything between eight foot and 12 foot. And so these uh, group of commodities are produced um, in the largest volume, as I say, uh, and sold into the home building market predominantly. The point of the having it in random uh, means that uh, a builder or even a retail yard can have a variety of wood coming in and sort it uh, on site into the piles uh, respectively, then have uh, material on hand available either for the construction or for the customer ready to go. And so those prices are this week, what we published on February 4th for customers who have a login to our uh, weekly price updates. And again, this is the graph I show all the time. The yellow line was 2020, caused quite a shock when the prices reached so high, as you can see, compared to the previous, uh, the pink line 2019 looks entirely flat, doesn't really reach above $400 per thousand board feet. And then, um, as I was saying in December, that blue line for 2021 absolutely blew everyone away in the spring. But really very interesting how the 2021 end close to the year before. And then the purple line far on the left, that's this year. And so this is very exciting for me to explain and pardon me as I geek out, but this is what I do all day. Once again, this is February 4th, 2022 prices. On the top, you've got the um, two by four randoms, as I explained before. The top one is your number two and better, the standard grade. Then you've got the number three utility. This is used in Canada, US for packaging and crating, uh, pallets and that kind of thing. Maybe sometimes for railway ties. Then the number four, economy grade, that's really used you know, to produce furring strips, uh, concrete forming, maybe some scaffolding. They're really temporary uses, um, which are for construction, but get knocked out and um, discarded once the project is finished. Below that is your specified lengths. So the top line is two by four. That uh, fourth line is two by four, but in an eight foot length. Then you've got your two by four and a 10 foot length. These go from eight foot to 16 foot. And you can see the price difference. So when I talk about how customers get to call around to different suppliers, they not only alternate between Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce and Southern Pine, they also alternate between random or straight lengths and between the grades. Uh, I think it's very important for people to understand where these materials go. The standard grade, the two and better, goes into Canada and U.S. for building. The um, sales out of Canada into the U.S. is approximately between 63 and let's say 75 percent of manufacturing. Into Canada, 10 percent. And um, there is uh, also a market in Japan. I'm not showing you those prices. It's number one appearance grade or premium grade. J grade is beautiful wood, no knots. Uh, absolutely perfect white piece of wood. Um, 6 percent. 6 percent of Canadian lumber manufacturing goes into Japan, but that is only number one premium grade. It doesn't really even sell into Canada, U.S. The number three, that's what goes to China. Once again, because they don't build houses out of wood, but they use it for 
concrete forming and um, other uses like that. And China now is in the habit of, they don't do regular buying like the 100 mil cars or a week or whatever it is. They buy when the price is what they would think is the lowest for the year and they'll buy a boat or two boats. And then you don't hear from them for a while until they feel um, it's a value buy. And once again, huge volumes. Ah, so, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting if, if that's what you do, right? Like, I find it really interesting. I don't make lumber, but I write about it. And we get, um, we source our data from all across North America. Uh, and it's constantly changing. It's a very, very changing landscape all the time. The biggest demand, the largest consumer is U.S. home building, the large U.S. home builders. People ask me all the time, you know, why is this piece of wood at my local retail yard, uh, you know, $40 or whatever it is. The retailers don't set the price. The contractors don't set the price. The small home builders don't set the price. The large home builders are the ones who buy in volume and the negotiations are so that that's where the price point comes in and everyone else is behind that. So now retailers, you know, that's also really interesting and we don't track that because it's very regional. Um, it depends on the place and it depends on the store. Um, they might have a bunch of wood in the back that they bought six months ago when the price was up or down by $500 or they might be out of supply and needing to buy now at whatever the price is at the moment. It varies completely and it, it used to be uh, retailers hedge, I mean they still hedge now, but it used to be you didn't really see the price of wood at the retail yard change all that much because the retailers would hedge on futures but they would also bring in supply throughout the year while the price was fluctuating so that for them at the end of the year it all got worked out and they didn't really need to change the price on the shelf but they still ended up making money you know when you average everything out over the lows in November and December and then the highs you know sort of February March April um, it's not really working that way right now first of all because for the past couple of years the what we uh, normally would recognize as the seasonality of construction doesn't seem to exist anymore. There's a lot of uh, climate situations happening that require emergency either um, in ahead of the storm or whatever's happening and certainly in rebuilding following these devastating um, events that we're having. And this is making the lumber manufacturing also not as seasonal as it used to be where the production volumes would drop, I, I always say, U.S. Thanksgiving is sort of like the end of the year and then picking up again um, toward uh, really the beginning of February. Uh, this seasonality is ha has not been for the past couple of years and like I said in my previous video, this year 2022 looks to be uh, essentially a repeat of last year 2021 and so you can expect that uh, buyers will not really be able to sort of forecast when will the price go down and uh, make their purchases then. So if you like what you see here, uh, do subscribe to the actual dashboard. Go to my website, madisonsreport.com. There's a link in my caption here. Fill out a form. And not just these tiny um, little bit of Western Spruce prices that I'm showing you, but the whole list of 500 individual lumber and panel commodity prices comes out once a week. You see it the week it comes out. And that also includes the market commentary, which explains what's happening in the uh, in the market of supply and demand with um, reasoning behind why the prices are changing, things like lock supply or inventory, uh, what's going on with the duty, which is going to change again uh, at the end of this year, and all of that juicy information. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now. I hope you found that interesting. Do subscribe here on my YouTube so you are informed when there's another video coming out and click like so that other people can get to see it.